Pesticide, Wikipedia article audio. Pesticides are substances that are meant to control pests. The term pesticide includes all of the following, herbicide, insecticides nematicide, molluscicide, piscicide, avicide, rodenticide, bactericide, insect repellent, animal repellent, antimicrobial, fungicide, disinfectant, and sanitizer. The most common of these are herbicides which account for approximately 80% of all pesticide use. Most pesticides are intended to serve as plant protection products, which in general, protect plants from weeds, fungi, or insects. Definition In general, a pesticide is a chemical or biological agent that deters, incapacitates, kills, or otherwise discourages pests. Target pests can include insects, plant pathogens, weeds, mollusks, birds, mammals, fish, nematodes, and microbes that destroy property, cause nuisance, or spread disease, or are disease vectors. Although pesticides have benefits, some also have drawbacks, such as potential toxicity to humans and other species. The Food and Agriculture Organization has defined pesticide as Uses Pesticides can be classified by target organism see table, chemical structure, although the distinction can sometimes blur, and physical state. Biopesticides include microbial pesticides and biochemical pesticides. Plant-derived pesticides, or botanicals, have been developing quickly. These include the pyrethroids, rotenoids, nicotinoids, and a fourth group that includes strychnine and psilocyde. 15. Amount used Many pesticides can be grouped into chemical families. Prominent insecticide families include organochlorines, organophosphates, and carbamates. Organochlorine hydrocarbons could be separated into dichlorodiphenylethanes, cyclodine compounds, and other related compounds. They operate by disrupting the sodium-slash-potassium balance of the nerve fiber forcing the nerve to transmit continuously. Their toxicities vary greatly, but they have been phased out because of their persistence and potential to bioaccumulate. 239-240 organophosphate and carbamates largely replaced organochlorines. Both operate through inhibiting the enzyme acetylcholinesterase allowing acetylcholine to transfer nerve impulses indefinitely and causing a variety of symptoms such as weakness or paralysis. Organophosphates are quite toxic to vertebrates and have in some cases been replaced by less toxic carbamates, 136-137 thiocarbamate and dithiocarbamates are subclasses of carbamates. Prominent families of herbicides include phenoxy and benzoic acid herbicides, triazines, ureas, and chloroacetanolides. Phenoxy compounds tend to selectively kill broad leaf weeds rather than grasses. The phenoxy and benzoic acid herbicides function similar to plant growth hormones, and grow cells without normal cell division, crushing the plant's nutrient transport system. 300 triazines interfere with photosynthesis, 335 many commonly used pesticides are not included in these families, including glyphosate. Benefits Pesticides can be classified based upon their biological mechanism function or application method. Most pesticides work by poisoning pests. A systemic pesticide moves inside a plant following absorption by the plant. With insecticides and most fungicides, this movement is usually upward and outward. Increased efficiency may be a result. Systemic insecticides, which poison pollen and nectar in the flowers, 
may kill bees and other needed pollinators. Primary Benefits In 2009, the development of a new class of fungicides called paldozins was announced. These work by taking advantage of natural defense chemicals released by plants called phytoalexins, which fungi then detoxify using enzymes. The paldozins inhibit the fungi's detoxification enzymes. They are believed to be safer and greener. Monetary Pesticides are used to control organisms that are considered to be harmful. For example, they are used to kill mosquitoes that can transmit potentially deadly diseases like West Nile virus, yellow fever, and malaria. They can also kill bees, wasps, or ants that can cause allergic reactions. Insecticides can protect animals from illnesses that can be caused by parasites such as fleas. Pesticides can prevent sickness in humans that could be caused by moldy food or diseased produce. Herbicides can be used to clear roadside weeds, trees, and brush. They can also kill invasive weeds that may cause environmental damage. Herbicides are commonly applied in ponds and lakes to control algae and plants such as water grasses that can interfere with activities like swimming and fishing and cause the water to look or smell unpleasant. Uncontrolled pests such as termites and mold can damage structures such as houses. Pesticides are used in grocery stores and food storage facilities to manage rodents and insects that infest foods such as grain. Each use of a pesticide carries some associated risk. Proper pesticide use decreases these associated risks to a level deemed acceptable by pesticide regulatory agencies such as the United States Environmental Protection Agency and the Pest Management Regulatory Agency of Canada. DDT, sprayed on the walls of houses, is an organic chlorine that has been used to fight malaria since the 1950s. Recent policy statements by the World Health Organization have given stronger support to this approach. However, DDT and other organic chlorine pesticides have been banned in most countries worldwide because of their persistence in the environment and human toxicity. DDT use is not always effective, as resistance to DDT was identified in Africa as early as 1955, and by 1972 19 species of mosquito worldwide were resistant to DDT. Costs Health effects Environmental effects Economics in 2006 and 2007, the world used approximately 2.4 megatons of pesticides, with herbicides constituting the biggest part of the world pesticide use at 40%, followed by insecticides and fungicides. In 2006 and 2007 the U.S. used approximately 0.5 megatons of pesticides, accounting for 22% of the world total, including 857 million pounds of conventional pesticides, which are used in the agricultural sector as well as the industrial, commercial, governmental, and home and garden sectors. Pesticides are also found in majority of U.S. households with 78 million out of the 105.5 million households indicating that they use some form of pesticide. As of 2007, there were more than 1,055 active ingredients registered as pesticides, which yield over 20,000 pesticide products that are marketed in the United States. The U.S. used some 1 kg per hectare of arable land compared with 4.7 kg in China, 1.3 kg in the U.K., 0.1 kg in Cameroon, 5.9 kg in Japan and 2.5 kg in Italy. Insecticide use in the U.S. has declined by more than half since 1980 
mostly due to the near phase-out of organophosphates. In corn fields, the decline was even steeper, due to the switchover to transgenic Bt corn. For the global market of crop protection products, market analysts forecast revenues of over US$52 billion US dollar in 2019. Pesticides can save farmers money by preventing crop losses to insects and other pests. In the US, farmers get an estimated fourfold return on money they spend on pesticides. One study found that not using pesticides reduced crop yields by about 10%. Another study, conducted in 1999, found that a ban on pesticides in the United States may result in a rise of food prices, loss of jobs, and an increase in world hunger. There are two levels of benefits for pesticide use, primary and secondary. Primary benefits are direct gains from the use of pesticides and secondary benefits are effects that are more long-term. Every dollar that is spent on pesticides for crops yields $4 in crops saved. This means based that, on the amount of money spent per year on pesticides, $10 billion, there is an additional $40 billion savings in crop that would be lost due to damage by insects and weeds. In general, farmers benefit from having an increase in crop yield and from being able to grow a variety of crops throughout the year. Consumers of agricultural products also benefit from being able to afford the vast quantities of produce available year-round. The general public also benefits from the use of pesticides for the control of insect-borne diseases and illnesses, such as malaria. The use of pesticides creates a large job market within the agrichemical sector. On the cost side of pesticide use there can be costs to the environment, costs to human health, as well as costs of the development and research of new pesticides. Pesticides may cause acute and delayed health effects in people who are exposed. Pesticide exposure can cause a variety of adverse health effects, ranging from simple irritation of the skin and eyes to more severe effects such as affecting the nervous system, mimicking hormones causing reproductive problems, and also causing cancer. A 2007 systematic review found that most studies on non-Hodgkin lymphoma and leukemia showed positive associations with pesticide exposure and thus concluded that cosmetic use of pesticides should be decreased. There is substantial evidence of associations between organophosphate insecticide exposures and neurobehavioral alterations. Limited evidence also exists for other negative outcomes from pesticide exposure including neurological, birth defects, and fetal death. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends limiting exposure of children to pesticides and using safer alternatives. Microbial pesticides which consist of bacteria, entomopathogenic fungi, or viruses. Entomopathogenic nematodes are also often classed as microbial pesticides, even though they are multicellular, biochemical pesticides or herbal pesticides are naturally occurring substances that control pests and microbial diseases, plant incorporated protectants have genetic material from other species incorporated into their genetic material. Their use is controversial especially in many European countries. Owing to inadequate regulation and safety precautions, 99% of pesticide-related deaths occur in developing countries that account for only 25% of pesticide usage. One study found pesticide self-poisoning the method of choice in one-third of suicides worldwide, and recommended, among other things, more restrictions on the types of pesticides that are most harmful to humans.
A 2014 epidemiological review found associations between autism and exposure to certain pesticides, but noted that the available evidence was insufficient to conclude that the relationship was causal. The World Health Organization and the UN Environment Programme estimate that each year, 3 million workers in agriculture in the developing world experience severe poisoning from pesticides, about 18,000 of whom die. According to one study, as many as 25 million workers in developing countries may suffer mild pesticide poisoning yearly. There are several careers aside from agriculture that may also put individuals at risk of health effects from pesticide exposure including pet groomers, groundskeepers, and fumigators. Pesticide use is widespread in Latin America, as around US $3 billion are spent each year in the region. It has been recorded that pesticide poisonings have been increasing each year for the past two decades. It was estimated that 50-80% of the cases are unreported. It is indicated by studies that organophosphate and carbamate insecticides are the most frequent source of pesticide poisoning. Pesticide use raises a number of environmental concerns. Over 98% of sprayed insecticides and 95% of herbicides reach a destination other than their target species including non-target species, air, water, and soil. Pesticide drift occurs when pesticides suspended in the air as particles are carried by wind to other areas, potentially contaminating them. Pesticides are one of the causes of water pollution, and some pesticides are persistent organic pollutants and contribute to soil contamination. In addition, Pesticide use reduces biodiversity, contributes to pollinator decline, destroys habitat, and threatens endangered species. Pests can develop a resistance to the pesticide, necessitating a new pesticide. Alternatively a greater dose of the pesticide can be used to counteract the resistance, although this will cause a worsening of the ambient pollution problem. The Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants, listed nine of the twelve most dangerous and persistent organic chemicals that were organochlorine pesticides. Since chlorinated hydrocarbon pesticides dissolve in fats and are not excreted, organisms tend to retain them almost indefinitely. Biological magnification is the process whereby these chlorinated hydrocarbons are more concentrated at each level of the food chain. Among marine animals, pesticide concentrations are higher in carnivorous fishes, and even more so in the fish-eating birds and mammals at the top of the ecological pyramid. Global distillation is the process whereby pesticides are transported from warmer to colder regions of the earth in particular the poles and mountain tops. Pesticides that evaporate into the atmosphere at relatively high temperature can be carried considerable distances by the wind to an area of lower temperature, where they condense and are carried back to the ground in rain or snow. In order to reduce negative impacts, it is desirable that pesticides be degradable or at least quickly deactivated in the environment. Such loss of activity or toxicity of pesticides is due to both innate chemical properties of the compounds and environmental processes or conditions. For example, the presence of halogens within a chemical structure often slows down degradation in an aerobic environment. Adsorption to soil may retard pesticide movement, but also may reduce bioavailability to microbial degraders. A study on the human health and environmental costs due to pesticides in the United States was estimated at $9.6 billion, offset by about $40 billion in increased agricultural production. Additional costs include the registration process and the cost of purchasing pesticides. 
The registration process can take several years to complete and can cost $50-$70 million for a single pesticide. Annually the United States spends $10 billion on pesticides. Alternatives to pesticides are available and include methods of cultivation, use of biological pest controls, genetic engineering, and methods of interfering with insect breeding. Application of composted yard waste has also been used as a way of controlling pests. These methods are becoming increasingly popular and often are safer than traditional chemical pesticides. In addition, EPA is registering reduced risk conventional pesticides in increasing numbers. Cultivation practices include polyculture, crop rotation, planting crops in areas where the pests that damage them do not live, timing planting according to when pests will be least problematic, and use of trap crops that attract pests away from the real crop. Trap crops have successfully controlled pests in some commercial agricultural systems while reducing pesticide usage, however, in many other systems, trap crops can fail to reduce pest densities at a commercial scale, even when the trap crop works in controlled experiments. In the U.S., farmers have had success controlling insects by spraying with hot water at a cost that is about the same as pesticide spraying. Release of other organisms that fight the pest is another example of an alternative to pesticide use. These organisms can include natural predators or parasites of the pests. Biological pesticides based on entomopathogenic fungi, bacteria, and viruses cause disease in the pest species can also be used. Alternatives Interfering with insects reproduction can be accomplished by sterilizing males of the target species and releasing them so that they mate with females but do not produce offspring. This technique was first used on the screwworm fly in 1958 and has since been used with the medfly, the tsetse fly, and the gypsy moth. However, this can be a costly, time-consuming approach that only works on some types of insects. Agroecology emphasize nutrient recycling use of locally available and renewable resources, adaptation to local conditions, utilization of microenvironments, reliance on indigenous knowledge and yield maximization while maintaining soil productivity. Agroecology also emphasizes empowering people and local communities to contribute to development, and encouraging multidirectional communications rather than the conventional top-down method. The term push-pull was established in 1987 as an approach for integrated pest management. This strategy uses a mixture of behavior-modifying stimuli to manipulate the distribution and abundance of insects. Push means the insects are repelled or deterred away from whatever resource that is being protected. Pull means that certain stimuli are used to attract pests to trap crops where they will be killed. There are numerous different components involved in order to implement a push-pull strategy in IPM. Many case studies testing the effectiveness of the push-pull approach have been done across the world. The most successful push-pull strategy was developed in Africa for subsistence farming. Another successful case study was performed on the control of helicoverba in cotton crops in Australia. In Europe, the Middle East, and the United States, push-pull strategies were successfully used in the controlling of Cytonol lineatus in bean fields. Some advantages of using the push-pull method are less use of chemical or biological materials and better protection against insect habituation to this control method. Some disadvantages of the push-pull strategy is that if there is a lack of appropriate knowledge of behavioral and chemical ecology of the host-pest interactions then this method becomes unreliable. Furthermore, 
because the push-pull method is not a very popular method of IPM operational and registration costs are higher. Some evidence shows that alternatives to pesticides can be equally effective as the use of chemicals. For example, Sweden has halved its use of pesticides with hardly any reduction in crops. In Indonesia, farmers have reduced pesticide use on rice fields by 65% and experienced a 15% crop increase. A study of maize fields in northern Florida found that the application of composted yard waste with high carbon to nitrogen ratio to agricultural fields was highly effective at reducing the population of plant parasitic nematodes and increasing crop yield, with yield increases ranging from 10% to 2-12%, the observed effects were long-term, often not appearing until the third season of the study. However, pesticide resistance is increasing. In the 1940s, U.S. farmers lost only 7% of their crops to pests. Since the 1980s, loss has increased to 13%, even though more pesticides are being used. Between 500 and 1,000 insect and weed species have developed pesticide resistance since 1945. Push-pull strategy Pesticides are often referred to according to the type of pest they control. Pesticides can also be considered as either biodegradable pesticides, which will be broken down by microbes and other living beings into harmless compounds, or persistent pesticides, which may take months or years before they are broken down, it was the persistence of DDT, for example which led to its accumulation in the food chain and its killing of birds of prey at the top of the food chain. Another way to think about pesticides is to consider those that are chemical pesticides are derived from a common source or production method. Effectiveness Types Insecticides Herbicides Biopesticides Neonicotinoids are a class of neuroactive insecticides chemically similar to nicotine. Imidacloprid, of the neonicotinoid family, is the most widely used insecticide in the world. In the late 1990s neonicotinoids came under increasing scrutiny over their environmental impact and were linked in a range of studies to adverse ecological effects including honeybee colony collapse disorder and loss of birds due to a reduction in insect populations. In 2013, the European Union and a few non-EU countries restricted the use of certain neonicotinoids. Classified by type of pest Organophosphates affect the nervous system by disrupting acetylcholinesterase activity the enzyme that regulates acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter. Most organophosphates are insecticides. They were developed during the early 19th century, but their effects on insects, which are similar to their effects on humans, were discovered in 1932. Some are very poisonous. However, they usually are not persistent in the environment. Carbamate pesticides affect the nervous system by acting as a reversible acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. This inhibition causes an increase in synaptic acetylcholine and overstimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system producing sludge syndrome effects similar to that of organophosphate pesticides. Further types They were commonly used in the past but many have been removed from the market due to their health and environmental effects and their persistence. They were developed as a synthetic version of the naturally occurring pesticide pyrethrin, which is found in chrysanthemums. They have been modified to increase their stability in the environment. Some synthetic pyrethroids are toxic to the nervous system. Regulation 
The following sulfonylureas have been commercialized for weed control, amidasulfuron, azimsulfuron, benzulfuron methyl, chlorimuronethyl, ethoxysulfuron, flazosulfuron, flapirsulfuron methyl sodium, halosulfuron methyl, imazosulfuron, nicosulfuron, oxazulfuron, primosulfuron methyl, pyrazosulfuron ethyl, rimsulfuron, sulfomethyrin methyl sulfasulfuron, terbacil, bispyrobacsodium, cyclosulfamuron, and pyrithiobacsodium. Nicosulfuron, triflusulfuron methyl, and chlorsulfuron are broad-spectrum herbicides that kill plants' weeds or pests by inhibiting the enzyme acetolactate synthase. In the 1960s, more than 1 kg slash ha crop protection chemical was typically applied, while sulfonylureates allow as little as 1% as much material to achieve the same effect. Biopesticides are certain types of pesticides derived from such natural materials as animals, plants, bacteria, and certain minerals. For example, canola oil and baking soda have pesticidal applications and are considered biopesticides. Biopesticides fall into three major classes. International Pesticides that are related to the type of pests are The term pesticide also include these substances United States Defoliants, cause leaves or other foliage to drop from a plant, usually to facilitate harvest, desiccants, promote drying of living tissues, such as unwanted plant tops, insect growth regulators, disrupt the molting, maturity from pupal stage to adult, or other life processes of insects, plant growth regulators, substances that alter the expected growth, flowering, or reproduction rate of plants, wood preservatives, they are used to make wood resistant to insects, fungus, and other pests. In most countries, Pesticides must be approved for sale and use by a government agency. History In Europe, recent EU legislation has been approved banning the use of highly toxic pesticides including those that are carcinogenic, mutagenic or toxic to reproduction, those that are endocrine disrupting, and those that are persistent, bioaccumulative, and toxic or very persistent and very bioaccumulative. Measures were approved to improve the general safety of pesticides across all EU member states. Though pesticide regulations differ from country to country, pesticides and products on which they were used are traded across international borders. To deal with inconsistencies in regulations among countries, delegates to a conference of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization adopted an international code of conduct on the distribution and use of pesticides in 1985 to create voluntary standards of pesticide regulation for different countries. The code was updated in 1998 and 2002. The FAO claims that the code has raised awareness about pesticide hazards and decreased the number of countries without restrictions on pesticide use. Three other efforts to improve regulation of international pesticide trade are the United Nations London Guidelines for the Exchange of Information on Chemicals in International Trade and the United Nations Codex Element Areas Commission. The former seeks to implement procedures for ensuring that prior informed consent exists between countries buying and selling pesticides, while the latter seeks to create uniform standards for maximum levels of pesticide residues among participating countries. Both initiatives operate on a voluntary basis. Pesticides safety education and pesticide applicator regulation are designed to protect the public from pesticide misuse, but do not eliminate all misuse. 
reducing the use of pesticides and choosing less toxic pesticides may reduce risks placed on society and the environment from pesticide use. Integrated Pest Management the use of multiple approaches to control pests, is becoming widespread and has been used with success in countries such as Indonesia, China, Bangladesh, the US, Australia, and Mexico. IPM attempts to recognize the more widespread impacts of an action on an ecosystem, so that natural balances are not upset. New pesticides are being developed including biological and botanical derivatives and alternatives that are thought to reduce health and environmental risks. In addition, applicators are being encouraged to consider alternative controls and adopt methods that reduce the use of chemical pesticides. Pesticides can be created that are targeted to a specific pest's life cycle, which can be environmentally more friendly. For example, Potato cyst nematodes emerge from their protective cysts in response to a chemical excreted by potatoes, they feed on the potatoes and damage the crop. A similar chemical can be applied to fields early, before the potatoes are planted, causing the nematodes to emerge early and starve in the absence of potatoes. In the United States, the Environmental Protection Agency is responsible for regulating pesticides under the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide and Rodenticide Act and the Food Quality Protection Act. Studies must be conducted to establish the conditions in which the material is safe to use and the effectiveness against the intended pest. The EPA regulates pesticides to ensure that these products do not pose adverse effects to humans or the environment. Pesticides produced before November 1984 continue to be reassessed in order to meet the current scientific and regulatory standards. All registered pesticides are reviewed every 15 years to ensure they meet the proper standards. During the registration process, a label is created. The label contains directions for proper use of the material in addition to safety restrictions. Based on acute toxicity, pesticides are assigned to a toxicity class. Some pesticides are considered too hazardous for sale to the general public and are designated restricted use pesticides. Only certified applicators, who have passed an exam, may purchase or supervise the application of restricted-use pesticides. Records of sales and use are required to be maintained and may be audited by government agencies charged with the enforcement of pesticide regulations. These records must be made available to employees and state or territorial environmental regulatory agencies. The EPA regulates pesticides under two main acts both of which amended by the Food Quality Protection Act of 1996. In addition to the EPA, the United States Department of Agriculture and the United States Food and Drug Administration set standards for the level of pesticide residue that is allowed on or in crops. The EPA looks at what the potential human health and environmental effects might be associated with the use of the pesticide. In addition, the U.S. EPA uses the National Research Council's four-step process for human health risk assessment, hazard identification, dose response assessment, exposure assessment, and risk characterization. Recently Coa-I County passed Bill No. 2491 to add an article to Chapter 22 of the county's code relating to pesticides and GMOs. The bill strengthens protections of local communities in Koa I where many large pesticide companies test their products. Since before 2000 BC, humans have utilized pesticides to protect their crops. The first known pesticide was elemental sulfur dusting used in ancient Sumer about 4,500 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia. The Rig Veda which is about 4,000 years old, 
mentions the use of poisonous plants for pest control. By the 15th century, toxic chemicals such as arsenic, mercury, and lead were being applied to crops to kill pests. In the 17th century, nicotine sulfate was extracted from tobacco leaves for use as an insecticide. The 19th century saw the introduction of two more natural pesticides, pyrethrum, which is derived from chrysanthemums, and rotenone, which is derived from the roots of tropical vegetables. Until the 1950s, arsenic-based pesticides were dominant. Paul Muller discovered that DDT was a very effective insecticide. Organochlorines such as DDT were dominant, but they were replaced in the U.S. by organophosphates and carbamates by 1975. Since then, pyrethrin compounds have become the dominant insecticide. Herbicides became common in the 1960s, led by triazin and other nitrogen-based compounds. Carboxylic acids such as 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid, and glyphosate. The first legislation providing federal authority for regulating pesticides was enacted in 1910, however, decades later during the 1940s manufacturers began to produce large amounts of synthetic pesticides and their use became widespread. Some sources consider the 1940s and 1950s to have been the start of the pesticide era. Although the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency was established in 1970 and amendments to the pesticide law in 1972, pesticide use has increased 50-fold since 1950 and 2.3 million tons of industrial pesticides are now used each year. 75% of all pesticides in the world are used in developed countries, but use in developing countries is increasing. A study of USA pesticide use trends through 1997 was published in 2003 by the National Science Foundation's Center for Integrated Pest Management. In the 1960s, it was discovered that DDT was preventing many fish-eating birds from reproducing, which was a serious threat to biodiversity. Rachel Carson wrote the best-selling book Silent Spring about biological magnification. The agricultural use of DDT is now banned under the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants but it is still used in some developing nations to prevent malaria and other tropical diseases by spraying on interior walls to kill or repel mosquitoes.